you were out in the pool? Oh, it was an oyster. Nothing room. about the ribs. Nothing. Nothing. Do you do you know any of them? Way before? No. No. Probably well over three or four hours before. That's it. I don't have a smoke. That's why. Right. I just buy a twenty roll and put it on the back. Yeah. <coughs> Monday, September 9th, Brookfield Planning Board, the, the meeting is called to order and set off the Department and 
um, the code inspector, and the building inspector, and the health officer. Is that something I would need to do prior to the application being turned in, or is that something you would do? I think you should use some judgment on that. If you think it's going to be a large, large event, I mean, we've had people come and say that we have 3,000 people up there. Then all those things are required. If you're looking at 50 people, it would, it would be on the smaller end. It would be around where we can serve, so between probably 50 to 90 people. Put that on your application. That, that waves a lot of the parking issues, mm -hmm. police issues. Yep. And um, it says this is a $20 fee for this application, etc. Yep. Okay. Um, I guess that's all my questions. October 22nd, it's not my business at all. 26. I'm not on the uh, select board, but <coughs> plenty of time. We'll look at the application yeah. Tuesday and see if there's any questions. If they're, if they're not, we'll move forward with it. There, is there anything that I should be warned that I need for the meeting next weekend or, or next week? Or Just bring, me, bring the application filled in. Okay. I have one question regarding this subject. There was some streamlining done to a special um, event uh, requirement. I don't know what was done, but there was talk about it last time we were here. I don't know what that streamlining entails. That, that happened because when you guys want to do an event, semi-spontaneous or whatever the way it was set up at the planning board was you had to come in here and go through the 60 page application etc pay a ton of money and everything and it was at your request we were able to streamline that for a one time event we'd send you to the selector because they're, they're the licensing and they're the enforcement agency anyway so it's in their hands so you go to them and fill out what Molly has okay. and, uh, that's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any more public comments? Announcements correspond to hey, hey, yes. um, I got a couple things. One, um, I did the time period for doing zoning amendments is fast uh, disappearing. Because um, you have to have hearings by usually the second week in January in order to get them on the warrant. Um, so I have a couple of those that I have questions about that I wanted to ask the planning board to address. But the first thing I wanted to address was the master plan. And my understanding from a couple different people is that uh, several of the sections of the existing master plan which goes through, as I recall, 2020. It's, uh, the name on it is Towards 2020, I think is the name. It's over here. Um, and, and so there was some work done a couple years ago, maybe more recently, but that there are chapters that it was, I don't know if it was a vote or just a discussion that we're not going to change any of this. And then my understanding is that there were a couple chapters that revisions were made. So this is scuttlebutt for me. I, I have no proof, but I and I don't know if anybody, maybe Ed, maybe Rich, were on the board when that happened. I know Ed is one of the people that I spoke to. So the long and short of it is. I'd like to see the planning board before the end of the year vote on what they're going to keep that's already in the existing master plan, vote on the changes that were made, and come up with master plan written in 2024 that goes forward to, I don't know, 2030. Um, 
so that we have a updated master plan. Because without that, it's kind of like shooting in the dark, going on a master plan that's pretty old. Um, yeah. And Rich tells me that um, master plan, you can add a section to a master plan at any point, and you can revise a section of a master plan at any point. And actually, I was looking at the master plan in Samway. They just added something new in 2023 to a report that was done probably about <coughs> seven years ago with a professional planning group that came in. Um, so I just would like to see the planning board address that once and for all and give the town a master plan. So that's something that I'm going to have, have, have to look at that from square one. Because I, I was on the planning board as a selectman a couple of years previous, I forget what year, and we were talking about the master plan, we were looking at that, and there was, there was discussion about our master plan was like 300 pages long and it was full of so much stuff. And, um, we were talking about whittling it down to two pages. It's a small town. There's nothing here. <clears throat> so that that sounds harsh, but I thought that the planning board had, had addressed all that and put that to bed in the last administration. No, they didn't. They, uh, they updated about four or five, three, four or five sections. They were ready to go with it and they did their research. You know, all you need is a public hearing to present the sections that are changed to the town. The planning board can accept it and go vote for it. Tell me, and it's done. We're going to start. I'll start from square one. I'll dig up the master plan and we'll look at it, go over it with the planning board. And if it's that close, there's sections that are done. There's, um, there should be no worries about getting it done by the end of the year. That's what I that's what I figured. I mean, if they actually made adjustments and it's just a matter of finalizing it, having a hearing, voting on it, then I think the townspeople deserve to have a master plan, not and not two pages. You you can't do a master plan, even though we're a small town. We have to relate to everything else that the biggest towns have to relate to. As I recall, we had a discussion around <clears throat> the format. Was it, for uh -huh. example, it starts with policy goals, policy principles, and then there's like four pages of Brookfield began as part of Middleton in 19, 1794. This such and such, you know, there's like this big history piece under this policy principles. It doesn't belong there. It belongs in their appendix. So I think we just need to look at Okay. And that, that's where we left it with Tim. We never voted on it. That's right. We'll dig it up. We'll get into it when we're not so busy. The um, I don't know, how 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 do we survive without master plans for so long? Is I know I know a guy. I'm, I'm going off on a tangent here, but I know a guy in Vermont. That, what he does, what his company does, is they write master plans. Mm -hmm. In towns with a lot of money, like some of them around here, they just call them up and say, we need a master plan. Right. They come in with a boilerplate, change the names of the towns, and they give it to them. Everyone's happy. Mm -hmm. Thousands of dollars. Most unfortunate for us, we have to do it ourselves. Right. Or you could hire somebody, but it costs an awful lot of money. We don't have that kind Sam of Sam was paid $60,000 yeah, for a consultant. Take us 20 years to save that up. The problem is that the RSAs require a master plan because, as you know, your zoning has to reflect what's in the master plan. Right. You can't just make up things. You can. And in this town, we probably could even pass things and nobody would even notice the difference. And guess what? Our zoning, what we have for zoning, it's all over the board anyway. Right. It's a lot of work to be done. A lot of work. That's my next question. <laughs> you ready to go to work? <laughs> sure. On 
the, I'd, I'd like to see the board address the, um, the issue that came out of last year's vote on the two amendments that the board put forward, five acre zoning was one, 400 foot uh, road frontage. Because of a lot of lack of information and a lot of wrong information, luckily the five acre, went, from my point of view, luckily the five acre went through. <clears throat> The, without the 400 foot um, frontage. frontage, thank you, it's, um, it's still effective, but it's, it doesn't deal with the issue that's behind increasing that zoning, and that is density. Right. Um, so I'd like to see the board talk about whether or not they want to put forth an amendment again this year, but in the meantime, do public information stuff, maybe even a news release to the Grand Estate that talks about the thinking behind this. And then also along with that, there was a lack of clarity. All these people we at the town meeting, this woman who just bought her house, said I now have a non-conforming lot because she doesn't have five acres. And that was used, I think, as a, um, well, let's just say that there was a lot of misinformation about what happens to a house lot that doesn't have the five acres. Nothing happens to it. That's right. Just like the house lots, one of our selectmen lives in a house lot that doesn't have two acres. Right. It's either that or he didn't have the 250 foot frontage. Went to the ZBA. He got the variance, lives there happily for years. So I think there needs to be a lot of public information about what it is that the planning board is trying to achieve in terms of density control. So those, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. Those, uh, those warrants that went in, mm -hmm. how right there? I'm sorry? Is that it right there? Do you have the uh, No, I don't have the warrant in front of me. That that was all um, in relationship to the master plan. People don't right. want density. Right. And there were public hearings, everything's published, and nobody comes here until they see the preview of the warrant, and then everybody's going apeshit, trying to put out signs and this and that. They have no information. They didn't come to any meetings, right. public meetings. And uh, so what are you going to do? Drag them in. They're not going to come here. I think differently about it, but what can I say? I'm not saying I don't do it because they're not going to come here, but I mean, it's just, that's what happened. Right. Oh, I'm well aware of it. And yeah. Also, I wanted to know if you had it with you because if, if you go back and read that, that, that 400 didn't pass because it was attached to something else. It should have been broken into like three or four questions. And it was broken into two. The, the, the two Warren articles, one for five acre. Right. And one just for 400 feet. It was something else on it. Let me look. I don't recall that. favor of adoption of Amendment 2, blah, 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 is recommended by the Planning Board as follows. Increase the road frontage required in the residential agricultural zone from 200 cont contiguous feet to 400 contiguous feet with access to the lot via the contiguous frontage. That's all that it says. Planning Board recommends majority vote required. That should have been split. The contiguous frontage in 400 feet. <coughs> that was one of the people that missed one of the things that misinformed people that were um, upset about. Because now 
the way the zoning is loosely written, you can have 100 feet on four different streets, and there's your 400 feet of frontage. So the contingu contiguous frontage is in that always been part of the zoning? To 250, doesn't that have to be contiguous? No. It doesn't? It doesn't. <coughs> if, it, if it is... It went through a couple of years ago. Okay, it went through a couple of years ago. Okay. That's why, to, to me, the only thing that changed in that was 250 to 400. And what's, what's the other one say? Is it just the other one is just five acres alone? Are you in favor? Uh, increase, no, uh, increase the minimum lot size in the residential agricultural zone from two acres to five acres and require that at least two of those acres be contiguous non-hydraulic soils with slopes of less than 8%, which was taken right from the previous zoning. So anyways, I, I would just like to see you guys discuss it about the advisability of trying again, but with public outreach. I, I understand, I mean, I've gone to enough meetings around here, nobody comes to the selectmen's meetings, nobody comes to the hearings, and you're right, then everybody gets riled up with misinformation, has no idea of the context under which this is being presented by the planning board. You know, it was thought through. It wasn't like you just went and picked something out of the air. At least I don't think so. Put a lot of work into it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I have a couple other things, but I, I don't want to monopolize the discussion. If, if there's time later, I can bring them up or I'll bring them up at the next meeting. You might come back when it's um, new business. Okay. I believe the lawyer wrote both of those, by the way. Did she? I have a question. It's not Tim Brunner, but she looked at it. We're going to watch them. Watch them. House last month passed in 1291, substantial majority, about expanding, uh, well, basically uh, superseding local zoning control for accessory drilling. Are you familiar with it? Yeah. Um, well, I just think it's something we have to deal with in the planning yeah. board. Are you familiar with that? I um, don't know the, the fine elements of it, but I mean, they also passed, not, they didn't, the legislature didn't pass. There's been a Supreme Court ruling, really? I believe it's Supreme Court, on um, short term rentals, <coughs> which our board has yet to address. Um, which I, is one of the other things I was going to bring up, again, for discussion or figuring out some way to get a sense from the local community how they feel about short-term rentals. But there, there's an article from last month's City and State that spells out very succinctly uh, what the problem was and what you have to do in drafting a ordinance about that in your zoning, and I suspect Laura is well versed in it. And as you know, it's, it's many towns, and I realize most people in Brookfield probably think, well, that's never going to happen in Brookfield, but we're a small town. They go all the things that happen that are never, never going to happen. Never going to happen. I right. thought would never happen. Yep. And years later, we're, we're fighting with them. I know we talked about accessory dwelling units in the last uh, planning board session, last administration. And uh, this law basically says that uh, they can require, or they can allow any homeowner to add two accessory dwelling units and the local uh, planning and zoning boards cannot prohibit them. Yeah. So that's something that we would have to address in our... Did that pass? Yes. 1291? Yeah, that was bad. Let me get the number here. It was like 220 to one. Check to see if it went all the way through. I think it didn't make it all the way through. Oh, it did not? What you said was accurate, but I don't think the Senate went with it. Okay. 
Okay, let's 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 move on from that now. We'll, we'll be able to get to some of that. Two twenty point four in a little bit. Review and possible approval of the August twelfth minutes. Did, did there was no quorum, so did, did you even write minutes? I just said there's no quorum, so it's in the book. Okay. So we don't have to go until we set that. Okay, new business. I put down begin warrant discussions. Like Craig brought up in public comments. We we had just had a good discussion on the beginning of setting up our warrants because that time is going to come soon. I have I have notes for the 400 feet. That's one, but we could add more on other meetings. We talked a lot on it tonight, including master plan we need to look at. <coughs> Thanks for stopping in. Thank you for having me. <coughs> you got a complaint like these other people? <laughs> Not yet, at least. Everything's going well. Good. Awesome. So, um, you want to you want to talk about the uh, the other ones <coughs> that you um, were thinking of, Craig? I'm sorry, I'm still. <coughs> we're we're going to begin warrant discussions. Yeah. Is that is that in line with what you were saving to say later? Uh, yes, it has to do with, uh, well actually I'd love to see the whole zoning ordinance reviewed, you mentioned that earlier. That's not going to happen in the next three months, but um, there is nothing that defines, um, my, my understanding is that an accessory unit is defined by the fact that it has a kitchen. It can have a bathroom and a room that's not an accessory unit. If you create an area to prepare food, that makes it an accessory unit. We have no definition in terms of accessory units for what a kitchen is. Sandwich defines it as, and I'm paraphrasing it, but it's very short, an area, not even a room, an area where food is prepared to be served. Okay. And the reason why I ask this is because when I was on the ZBA, we dealt with a situation where there was a living room and a bathroom. Actually, it was a living room, bedroom, and a bathroom. And then in a separate area, they had a small refrigerator, two burner, cook stove with a propane tank, small 10 pound or 20 pound tank, and uh, no sink. They used the bathroom sink for cleaning up. To me, that's a kitchen. But without a definition, we're stuck. I would think we would just adopt the state's definition. It looks like there's one in 2016, and it just talks about provisions for sleeping, eating, cooking, and sanitation on the same parcel of land as the principal dwelling in companies. Pretty clear. I don't see why we have to reinvent the world. The state's already defined it. Well, we'd like to go. Well, I think I think we have to embrace them. And say this is the definition. We have to say that. Yes, right. the state's definition. Yes, right. Yes. That's what I would do. We got a whole host of opportunities to say we're going to use the state's definition, but we have to take that step. Right. The other confusing thing, I went to look at definitions, and I only went to the zoning ordinance. Uh, it's it's an appendix, I believe. It's at the end, and I went through it, and I thought, God, there's hardly anything in here. So then I started reading all the regulations and other part <coughs> sections, floodplain, solar, I think the uh, wind, wind turbine thing, or wind power thing, and then in subdivision, in 
site plan review, when you go to definitions, it says site plan review. Definitions will be are used from the subdivision plan. So I go to the subdivision plan and look for permitted uses. Yeah, in the appendix for permitted uses, it says these uses are permitted in the recreational zone. But bird watching is there. Does bird watching have to go through a site plan review? I, I think all the definitions need to be spelled out so that when you get to the site plan review, um, where is it? Someplace in here, I have a copy of it. And it talks about the three things that trigger a site plan review. Change of use is the one that has most recently been issued. I doubt if there's going to be an expansion of a building more than 100,000 square feet, or 1,000 square feet. Um, but it begs the question, on those permitted uses, which ones need a site plan review and which ones don't? And how do you define most of those things? Some are self-explanatory, but I, I'm in, when you have an ordinance, I'm in favor of very clear definitions. I'll, I'll agree. What is a full-service restaurant? And what is a food service slash activity uh, oriented activity? I forget the, the second word, but that's what's in the permitted uses. Yeah, that, that's, that's one example in our zoning that is all over the board. Yes. The page is devoted to windmills and solar and cell towers far exceeds the pages devoted to the town hall and civil towns. Yes, right. I know. So, yeah. so someone had this set head screwed up the wrong way or something. But that happened years ago. Right. And it's going to be a big task to sort it all out. There was even talk of incorporating another town a similar size, um, <coughs> repair and replace. So in verbatim, and then work it backwards from there. Right, you certainly don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's, There's plenty of good zoning ordinances out there. A lot of towns have already done this work. Yeah. This one hasn't. It's, in, it's like the Wild West. It's, somebody comes in and does something, people go crazy, and there's nothing in the zone that says they can't do it, so then we're scurrying around to get something on the zoning so it doesn't happen. Right. And then something else comes on, and it's just continuous. Oh yeah, I'm totally in agreement. So how do we get ahead of it? I mean, that's our job to figure out how to fix this. That's right. I, mean, I, 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 would, I would think, for example, we could pull on SRPC. What are their, what's their advice? How do we move forward to solve the whole zoning issue that we it is Marshall, but just tweak them and ask when you go to your meeting, right. how do we how do we deal with it? I mean there's example after example after example, but the problem is we gotta re we gotta rework the whole package. So they'll want the uh, dudes to talk to us, right? We paid. Oh, okay. See we paid this year, we paid, we got feedback that they could help us in this area, and we got feedback from the road agent that they can help us help us with roads. So we paid the dues this year. Well that's 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 good. But we, we can use it up. It'll it'll be a lot easier than uh, it was just a war before years ago. They didn't want they just didn't want to pay. I understand. Well, now that we've paid them, it, it would it would be foolish not to take advantage of it. And I'm not sure they'll do it, but they sure get help us get going. Oh, I I am very well oiled in the machinery there, so Good. I can get them to do whatever we. And if we have to spend the $60,000, if we have to quantify something, 
Right. That's a war article. We ask the town if they want to spend that money. And we just give them the data. Because yeah. I mean, they write, they write master plans. They do all that as a service. I mean, they charge, but it's not crazy. It's not 60 grand, and that's for sure. So I, I think, think they wrote the one we have, and the feeling was <coughs> with a lot of work. It wasn't really customized to this town. Right. right, the one written in uh, the big thick one, which is way out, that was written, I want to say, though, it was Lakes Region okay. that we were a member of at that time. Um, I don't think, I know there's always been the argument that they think, like even Stratford County thinks in terms of Dover, Rochester, and not a little town like us. But I like to believe that a planner should be able to look at the 2018 survey that was done that Tim did a wonderful analysis of, and it's on the website, and say, we can work with this. Consider it done. Happy to do it. We just help them, help them know we're a small town. We don't. We don't want to be Dover. We don't want subways. <laughs> so. It also doesn't have to be just the planning board. It can be a couple planning board members and a couple people from the community. Of course. You know, as a working committee. That's open meetings down there. Well, it would be nice if we strategically thought about. Pager of what what we envision this town to be, even if it takes two pages or a page. I mean, what is it? So if it's pretty clear and pretty simple, which <laughs> we might have somebody to know the style of that on notes. But it might be updating infrastructure. I mean, who knows what it could be, right? They do it all the time, right? They should be able to help us. Of course. Right. That's good. That was some good discussion. So I'm, I'm going to put I'm going to put that on um, new business for the next meeting. Put it. Put my name on there to do something. Like that. And probably the first thing to do is for us to think about what we want to accomplish. Give me three, four bullets, right? Of what we want to investigate, to talk about, to ask about, and then I'll do it and I'll get a response. You know, well, maybe if it makes sense that you come to the next meeting. Right. You have to proceed. Here's what I need. Right. Let's we'll do that too. What's that next meeting? Our next meeting. When's the next meeting? It doesn't matter. I'll call her and just talk to her. That's okay. all. <laughs> okay. How do we get started? Right? Let them tell us what we have to do here. Right. <coughs> Absolutely. Okay, Craig, we're all, we're all amped up on that. Any member comments? <laughs> Just um, based on some feedback I've heard from not too many people, but some people, as Craig pointed out, some people are concerned that the five acre will inhibit them from developing properties they already have that are less than five acres that were lots. I think it would be beneficial just to clarify what we passed last year. In our zoning or inhibit in, in the zoning. And maybe all it does, all we have to do is say it, it should have been it should have said as of March blah 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 two thousand twenty four. I think I Go think forward. I think the zoning says if you have a non conforming lot, follow these rules. Right. But you have to go to the C B A then. May maybe. I that's not clear to me. You know, you have to be able to turn setbacks. Yeah, it's it's yeah. standard procedure to um, New articles on the zone I got from the state forward. 
but it just doesn't say that. And I've had that question. So somebody has a four acre lot yep. that was perfectly developable, had all the frontage of the yep. Now they don't have a developable lot, or they do. We think they do, but they don't think they're like, well, what do we have to do? We have to go to the zoning, whatever. So. One thing to just understand is that from this day forward, if you have a parcel of land and it is not subdivided into two acre lots with 250 feet frontage, you don't have an option to go do that right. after it's been passed. But so if you had four acres, you could have had two lots if you did it before this year. Yes. Right, but now you have one lot. Yeah, and if you had if you have the four acres, you divided into two. You still have it. Some lots in town are a lot smaller than that. Yeah. When I was on the ZBA, we had an application on Bryce Drive, less than two acres, because most of those lots were less than two acres because they were developed before there was zoning. And um, all they had to do was come in, they had to come to the ZBA because they weren't going to be able to meet the setbacks under septic. It's very similar to what Amanda Pierce had to go through to be able to put up a garage, which then triggered a, a change for substandard lots um, with setbacks. So it's, it, you know, it shouldn't be a problem. But that somehow that needs to be communicated. That's the point. That's because there was a lot of misinformation being passed around that had people very fearful right. that they were losing their property. Yeah, on some of those other things, when people come out and say they want to do this, and when they do that, it causes problems. You gotta stay focused on what you said you were gonna do in the first place. The other member comment, the other feedback that I'm getting is people want to know, can I do this with my property? And to answer that question, what we're telling people is, you have to look at our current zoning. What's permitted today may not be permitted tomorrow. So don't lock yourself in based upon what you read today. you got to be careful that it could be impacted in the future. Can I do this? Today you can. Tomorrow maybe not. So you have a good sense of, here's the well, 10 things that people ask, right? And do we have uh, an answer for those? <laughs> uh, or whatever, I mean, whatever it is, right? In other words, to address your question of how do we get ahead of it, we could brainstorm, here's all the stuff that's happened and could happen, and do we, are we, clear on what happens to all of those, and then we've got it covered, right? Well, Can't be that true. hard. <laughs> no, no, the last, the 11th question. <laughs> it's generally a subdivision question or a building question. Very specific. Can I do this with my life? Anyone? Meeting adjourned. Thanks for the input tonight, Craig. Sure. It's just um, I was thinking about how to how to get discussions like that started. And so I put a few things down that we had here. It's um you did it, you did it for us. I don't know how to get the words out of your comment. I mean I understand what you're saying, people don't understand. You always have the Z B A, right? Yeah. But they don't appreciate that. And they're in the Z B A for reason. I mean, they understand their grandfather's lot. But you don't have to do that if you can just go to the code enforcement and get a permit. Yes. Did you time out when the meeting was adjourned then? I did. Probably 7. 7.43. 7.43. 7 okay. It really gets adjourned when I Huh? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you the tape's still going. Of course it is. Okay. Jeremy, you can Jeremy shut up. J E T S Jets. Did you hear this from a lot of people? <laughs> really? Tonight? No. no.
Aaron Rodgers, my man. <laughs> I love that guy. He's crazy. <laughs> Is that uh, Wes from the University of Michigan? It is. Are you a Michigan grad? I am not. Oh. My family, everybody is. Yes, yeah, same here. Are we done talking about time business? So I can shut up. What's football? Though? Pardon me? Football. I'm asking you as the chair. Are you done talking about We're just meeting at uh, Michigan. 740. 743. Okay, thank you. That's great. I thought that was Notre Dame. It looked like an end from over here. So, Rick, can I ask you a technical question about this? Is this about the planning board? It is. Well, no, it's my question. My question is about clarifying uh, the zoning board issue versus the other. Is that okay? That's my question because I I don't know what the issue is, so I can't explain it to you. Well, what I saw. We yeah. have uh, plan about an office hours on Thursday. Right. This meeting's closed. We can't talk about all that. Let's see. So. Thursday morning. Are you there Thursday morning? Yeah. Am I here Thursday morning? Let's see. Oh, that good. will be it. Be you're, still, you're still asking me about Thursday. 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 The Thursday after the meeting. Okay. Yeah, somewhere just by the way. It's posted. Somewhere it says, I think on the website it says it's like the second Thursday as opposed to the Thursday after the meeting. Oh, is it? Yeah, in the minutes at the bottom it says it's Thursday after the meeting. So now it's, not, it's not an official meeting, but I put it no, on the calendar not. so people know that they can It's in the calendar. Up. Oh, you did put it there. It's in the calendar and it says um, forum maybe Chris. Rick, what time are you going to be there? I'll meet you. I'm not going to be there Thursday. You're having surgery. Yeah, that's right. So, so like, if it goes that good. <laughs>